early 1970s British music scene. A muddle of hard rock demigods, dropout hippies and pub rock wannabes. Where could it go? What could follow? Something had to give. Eventually, during the middle of the decade it did, through an explosion of raw talent which would become known as punk. A sound which, although frowned upon by rock's mainstream, importantly succeeded in awakening a generation of bored and disillusioned teenagers and temporarily turning the British music industry upside down. But if 1976 and 77 can be defined as the years of punk, for some at least, by 1978 it was already well and truly dead. For the few that recognised this early on and decided to bail out then, it was more a case of where to go next. And whilst punk itself had once been a reaction to the turgid early 70s British music scene, some escapees felt justifiably a need to react against the compromise and self-parody that punk had already become. This is the story of one such group. What were you all doing before Rima Rima? Wow. Know, Blimey. Know, well, <laughs> we were working on Well, I was um, in a group with Marco. Yeah, yeah, and I was in a group, this group with Mick. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, my name's Michael, mm-hmm. and I was in a group with Marco, um, the models. Yeah, and my name's Marco, and I was in a group with Michael. And my name's Mark, and I used to kind of hang around with the models. In fact, I was in the models for about two weeks. Yeah, I'm Gary, and I used to go and see them play. Before they were the models, they were the BC Cads. Oh. And, um, so the models, yeah. you had the single on Step Forward. Yes. And then toured with the Heartbreakers. Yes. Played around quite a bit, I would imagine. A bit, yeah. And so how did the models disintegrate and Rima Rima come about? Sure. Well, I answered an ad, so that's easy. Um, yeah. Did the we, models. Didn't, sort we, didn't of, we just get fed up with Cliff? We did, yeah. sadly. <laughs> He's no longer with us. Um, so we can say these things. Yes, we did get fed up with. Uh, he, he, Cliff got more and more into this idea that he was David Bowie. Well, he was never out of that idea, was it? He started started with that idea. Mm. But it came more to the fore, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. And he started writing these rather pompous. Yeah. Sort of thought he thought was station to station, but wasn't at all. Mm. I mean, David Bowie's brilliant, but Cliff wasn't David Bowie. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so uh, yeah. at the end of that, it's, uh, it became apparent to me that, you know, the, the whole punk thing yeah, that was, was sort of like, um, <laughs> lasted for about two weeks anyway, and um, we were sort of like stuck in that, and I just thought, well, you know, it's, it's not for me what, what, what we were doing. Uh, it didn't sort of resonate, it didn't sort of feel right. I wanted to sort of, I certainly felt, I'm sure Marco felt the same way, that... Um, we wanted to sort of like progress and sort of like do something. Do something else. Yeah. And um, I remember it was with Gary. We had a. I was. I was we were talking about this on the way down. Yeah. What 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 year it was? But it was um, seventy eight. The summer of seventy eight. Me and Gary had a flower pitch <laughs> outside Sloan Square. Yeah. Your brother's sort of like I don't know how he got that. It's very dodgy. That, yeah. And we were sort of sat there for I don't know how many weeks of summer through the summer <laughs> selling thing, flowers, yeah. and we sort of talked about. Uh, we were talking about sort of music and what sort of music we wanted to make. And um... you know what albums were around at that time? There was Kraftwerk's Man Machine, yeah, it's getting lots of plays, mm. and Street Lust. Hassle. That yeah, one. and uh, Lust, on. Lust for Life. Lust, Lust for Life, Marco, and the, well and played. The, and the Idiot. And yep. the Idiot was a big one. Yeah, sure. no, and Heroes. But heroes and Low, yeah. But we were, I mean, we were all in the, you know, the underground. And the idea that I, you know, I just had this thought, you know, it's, it's about noise, making noise. I just wanted to make noise, really. Yeah. And um, a lot of it.
then I remember sort of just going to Marco and saying, look, I, I've had enough. Do you, do you fancy sort of like trying something different? And he said, yeah, I think I think that was basically it, wasn't it? So we just sort of had, had enough. And yeah, that was it. That was it. That was what happened. We tried uh, to be with the drum machine at first, Marco's Mini Pops <laughs> Jr. In those days, drum machines had, you know, Samba, Waltz, or Bossa Nova, and you could speed it up and slow it down. That was it. And we tried that for a while, and then we thought, no, we need a drummer, so we advertised. And but also, we Max that. comes with baggage. her own baggage. history. Yeah, baggage, <laughs> baggage, baggage. Tell us about your baggage, Max. <laughs> I never had any sort of intention of, of being in bands, but um, I just met up with, with Andy Warren and Bid and um, was in a band that became the monochrome set and the ants. I mean, very briefly, it had both Bid and Adam as the singer, which, of course, was the world's worst combination ever. So that wasn't going to work out. Um, so they just kind of they just basically told me that I was going to play drums and that I was going to be called Max. So oh. so that that was just decided for me, really. I had a Pearl Max win drum kit, and I was called Max, and, and uh, I played very briefly with this, this, this band without a name, and then was kind of in various other things. I um, was in Subway set for about two hours. Um, wow. That didn't really work out. Um, they were good, weren't they? Yeah. I like yeah. them. Yeah. Um, I don't really read Melody. I was, saying, the ad was, I was thinking the other day, I think the ad was in Melody Maker. I don't yeah. read Melody Maker. I think it was that. I must be Andy Warren. We'll blame him. Right. Um, anyway, yeah. I answered the ad and I was a bit nervous about it because I'm not really a proper mus- musician or anything. It's just sort of more of a kind of well, Mo Tucker inspired drama. Are any of us apart from Marco? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think you were. Yeah, we were musicians. Well. But I do, I mean, even though, I mean, I've never played drums in anything resembling a sort of rock band kind of way, but I mean, I'm, I'm very interested in the Well, that's in what we were interested kind of in, wasn't it? We, we, didn't, we, we didn't want a drummer. We wanted, you know, we wanted someone who sort of like yeah. thought Hit the same things. way. Did we ask for a female drummer? No. 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 no, but we did, we put um, we no hi-hats, um, and we also put um, no. Craftwork and Velvet Underground yeah, I mean. uh, in the ad, just to get the general... General field and like Nick it. said, really we were looking for someone who wasn't the traditional rock drummer playing tons of cymbals all the time and making noise. I also remember that the ad said between age eighteen and twenty three, and I think oh. I was just past my twenty third birthday, and I was really oh. worried that I was <laughs> too old. Cheating. <laughs> well, like we, like we were going to know. Yeah, <laughs> but I did. I did. So, I did. Say, I think I said it when I phoned you up, Marco. I think I said, "I'm I'm just twenty three. Is that all right?" <laughs> and then I met Gary and Marco at Kensington High Street Station. Did you? Right. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. was around the corner from you then. wasn't It, it was because yeah. I was living in Exhibition Road at the time. Yeah, I can remember coming, dropping, dropping, um, dropping you off when we. Did did the um, rehearsals yeah and sometimes and andy would be around he'd just come back from an adam and the ants gig somewhere and we used to come up and have a cup of coffee maybe yeah yeah they were just called Tea the and ants biscuits then. Or just, just, called just the to ants, be historically right? correct <laughs>
thing that was quite different about it, I thought, was the fact that it was sort of driven by bass. And music wasn't sort of really driven by bass at that particular time. So that was um, unusual in its own little way. And having a female drummer was quite unusual. And, and uh, having a synth player of any kind was unusual. That was mm. correct as well, yeah. Marco. Yeah. Well played, yeah. One oscillator, wasn't it, Mark? Yeah. So that's <laughs> well, <it's the> <laughs> monophonic synthesizer. Yeah. Mm. I mean, every band, had nice a every band had a guitar player, so it, well, I wasn't particularly special. Well, the feedback. Well, what you did, you did have a Wim copycat, which was um, I've I've got it still. Yeah, I bought it off you. Sell that on eBay. Magpies too bad. Have a nine. We're just listening no, to the tracks I, the other day, though. I still I was use it. Um, yeah. It sounds good. What do you do? do, do, do use it in your dreams or what, Mark? Well, how do you mean? You're, you, what, what are you doing with it? It's, it's, it's oh, the give it back. Yeah. Give it back to Mark. Yeah. That's where it belongs. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Sure. Um, oh, no. well, yeah. Is it the is it the copycat one or the copycat? It was on a tape, wasn't it? Yeah. Was that one. Yeah. 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 That, that was always the problem. That was brilliant, actually. The effects from that was absolutely. Yeah. It made the tracks. Yeah. Yeah. I think just on rehearing the things now that that it. I, I think it was a very special sound, actually. Well played, she says modestly. Because <laughs> I just think it's the combination of things. You know, there's really unusual synth sounds. There's, there's two vocalists who had r really different vocal styles. Naivety. There's, there's, there's Ma a lot of Marco, naivety. Lots of naivety. Marco's brilliant guitar. Mm, yeah. And brilliant. then this fantastic, you know, really driving. I don't know, is it a Rickenbacker bass or oh, what is no, it? No, no. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, no, no. I'm, See, I'm, not, I'm not a musician. I'm just a, just a once no, would be drummer. Wasn't. There's a Fender bass. A Fender bass, sorry. Precision, yeah. Precision. Yeah. Sorry, it just has that. I don't know, I think of it as a kind of... With the Marshall sort of, amp and cabinet. Well, it was with the distortion as well. Yeah. yeah. The distortion, yeah. yeah. But the amp yeah. and cabinet to give it the vibe. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. I just, as, as I say, it was just what about making as much noise. I had no idea. But it wasn't just <laughs> noise. It's really rhythmical and it's really melodic. But it was just like, it was actually... Um, it, it's just, just, just lots of different kind of layers, mm. of, layers of sound and, mm. and playing with, with rhythms and sounds and melodies. I mean, I think... I think there's lots of things from that that time and and certainly lots afterwards that just just go for like pure out and out noise. And also certainly yeah. the combination of the bass and guitar was almost a role reversal, wasn't it? Yes. Almost. Yeah, I think that. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Well, Lin Linda used to say that bass was is lead guitar. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> in the sense, I think. In a way, the, the bass took the lead. Yeah. yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, couldn't, yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't. Well, play they were either. a solo. That it was kind of like a. A wall of sound, really, wasn't well, it? it? Well, it just kind of like they kind of merged in places. Well, I thought I thought that you idea. took I thought you took the kind of role of rhythm guitar a lot of the time, so that it, it yeah, was kind maybe. of like working with the match, drums, yeah. so that you've got a really constant mm. kind of rhythm section that's mm. coming from that, and that's freeing Marco and Mark up to to actually just just go wherever they wanted to go. Mm. But I but I couldn't play lead guitar, and I still can't play lead guitar. The idea of feedback yeah. always appealed to you, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, because it's easy. I mean, well, but it was brilliantly done. Yeah, it's brilliantly yeah, it done, and it's easy, yeah. and everyone gets really impressed. And that's exactly... Yeah. Which is yeah. which is <laughs> the whole point of doing it, I suppose. Yeah. You see, that's exactly the point. If I've ever described <laughs> Rima Rima to people, it's like... It's, it's to say that Marco's guitar was feedback, whereas Mick's bass was... If there was if there was a kind of lead instrument in there yeah. for me, it was the more bass. about the bass. Yeah, you're correct in that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it was kept written it, around kept, the bass. Uh, well, it kept, all kept, kept it all together. Yeah. Otherwise, it would just be loads of squalls, and it wouldn't even be music at all. It'd just be actually boring. Right. Yeah. yeah. Where did you get to hear about it, Vincent? How did you come about? Well, I saw you play wow. two times at least because I certainly I was at the Albany at Deptford. Okay. The mm. Rainbow. Yeah, that yeah. was a good gig, that yeah. one. Jack the Ripper. Yeah, and that one. That possibly, great. possibly the Moonlight. Did you play the Moonlight? Yeah, we did. Yes. I think we yeah. might have done that one twice. Twice. Did we? Did we? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well yeah. played, Mark. Yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> Yeah. 
people at that point in time you bonded with musically? Nobody. Nobody. Oh, <laughs> <well>. <laughs> Nobody. We liked really, other people, and that's why we Throbbing invited Crystal them. were kind of out there, weren't yeah. they? It was kind of interesting for a while. And, Who was? Uh, Throbbing, Throbbing Crystal. Crystal. Oh, yeah. yeah. No? Yeah, no. They were friends of yours. They were. Yeah, I mean, there's people that we, you know, or there's bits of music that we liked and we sort of saw. But I mean, in terms, of, I don't know what what you mean exactly by bonded, but I, I, I felt sort of apart. I wasn't deliberately. I didn't want to. You know, I don't. I don't think we deliberately set out to be apart, but we did, certainly didn't fit in to what was what was going on because I, I think that a lot of it was sort of still sort of quite for, formulaic and sort of song driven. We, we were looking to sort of make. Mm. I, can't, I, in fact, I can't even remember what was going on. Well, magazine. Do you remember yeah, magazine? Yeah, magazine. magazine. Like that. Good. Joy Division, um, or was it sort of uh, round about the time or just just mm, after? And we got were, compared to them sometimes, yeah. and I could Cabaret. never, I never understood that one at all. Oh, yeah. yeah, Cabaret Voltaire. Um, yeah, nag, nag, nag. Um, and <laughs> manicured noise. Uh, they were quite good. I quite liked Manicured yeah. Noise. They were Birth- underrated. Birthday party. They was were they sh- that yeah. Yeah. It was shy singer. Oh, right. Shy singer. They were a couple of years later. Right. The reason I asked the question is because there were moving away from the models for obvious reasons. Mm. It kind of speaks for itself. But at the same time, there's other things coming out. I didn't like all that, that kind of Acklam Hall sound. I thought it was it was all kind of up its own bum, really. And there was like lots of kind of like. Six formers trying to be. No, but I agree with Marco. I mean, I think like there was, this is sort of art house movement yeah, sort of thing, and I, we didn't, we weren't, you know. Although I think we got lumped in with that a bit. Yeah, we and did get lumped in with that, but it was just. I mean, the thing is not how it was very punk. Still very punk. The idea of punk still was there for me about yeah. what we did. But, but we, of course, but, public image. But we'd never, we would never have admitted it at the time, and people would say, "Oh no, we're not punk anymore." Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. all that week sort of like. Mm. Because by then, punk had become the whole sort of Sid and Nancy thing, which I think we wanted to be as far away from, away from as yeah. possible. You know. I think we must have struggled a little bit with, with playing with other people because we tended sometimes to play with films. Yeah. They were our support. Uh, we supported yeah. the films, you know, like Frank Sinatra. And, uh, no, we, did the, we did the H.G. Wells actually, at the Scala. That's true, yeah. No, but Wells, we did yeah. we did um, we did one at the screen of the green, didn't we? And one at screen um, the green. Scala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we did we things did a kind of come. things to things come, to yeah, come. And Cause that, yeah. Something else well, come things to come. That's a good point because I wanted to kind of ask you about the whole image thing, and you always used sort of futuristic, hmm. sort of an old style futurism. And p- particularly, I remember always if if there's a kind of defining thing for me as the logo for the group, it's that picture of the guy from Things to Come in the Suit, yeah. right? Yeah. Raymond Massey. That one out. That's, is that who it is? Yeah. Brilliant picture. Right, that. I love that picture, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I know I was really into things like Fritz Lang's Metropolis and sort of... I think we all of, I, think I we can all remember, were. Max, you coming back with Andy Warhol's um, autograph book. Yeah, it's one of my memories yeah. of you. So I was thinking, I wish I'd well, gone I was really down heavily into Andy the kind Warhol. of like the the New Art York scene, scene yeah. and, and going to see all those late night movies. Yeah, you know the cinemas. Yeah, but Marco used to do that a lot. Mm. Yeah, used to jump in the van think, and go and see. Actually, that. I think yeah. I I mean I I think sleep and shit. We spent you know. more time. I'd say we probably spent more time seeing seeing films than than going to see other bands and things. I mean, personally, I was like really sleeping. really interested then in cinema and live just around the corner from the electric cinema so you know had the opportunity to go yeah. and see lots of like really good without jumping on the bus late night things tell me about the song lawrence harvey ah oh, i think <laughs> we should explain that one max because that kind of that was just a it was a, um, a collection My of things that we things. liked at the time yeah yeah, yeah. Well, our favorite things it's kind of a list thing really just the voice had to be four <laughs> syllables yeah i oh, think right, right. i think a lot of us really like list songs and just like the idea I'm trying to think who else was on the list now. I can't remember now. I was who just did like, here? I, I who did here? Yeah. I get that one and I did oh, the only <laughs> solo venture I did. I did a single with Genesis Peoria a couple of years later. Did you? It was called I Confess and that was a list song. But I kind of. So the things that are in that list and the, sing, the things that are in Lawrence Harvey, I get muddled up. I can't remember right. which was in which. Yeah, but in your list song, it sort of had a lyric around the list. <laughs> yeah, flow. Yes, as opposed to being just, just a list. Just a list. Right. Which actually I like oh, better, really, yeah, on reflection. Yeah, I, I, I think it's good, like yeah. I like boys in beetle boots and tall, slim girls in workout suits. The same brand bags as Philip Marlowe. And so 
subway set Lipstick names like Crimson Sobe Bank will go by pie at sea Oh, 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 oh I can kiss Yeah, 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 yeah Oh, 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 oh I can kiss Yeah, 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 yeah And how about Christopher? Oh, God. I think that was the downfall of the whole fucking group. It's, um, <laughs> it, that, it was a serious track, though. It was a serious, track, though, it was a serious yeah. track, and that was my fault. It was, it um, was your fault. It was it your brother, wasn't it, Christopher? Well, no, that's it, his name, yes. Well, um, <laughs> but well, I just had this. Oh, where did this Christopher come Robin? From? Well, it's just. It was. Um, no, it was just a song. It was a but song. He was taking drugs in the song, wasn't he? Do you remember? I don't remember the song very, but I ah. do remember sort of everybody hating it, and um, right. and, yeah. and, and now I understand why. I do, <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, it was a very dour and down, you know, sort of song. See, but, I um, thought it was kind of like you do these songs, you know, was, like Fond Affections. I mm. thought it was kind of like a, you know, when you write a song like Fond Affections. Mm -hmm. I thought it was sort of it came from a similar sort of place, and yeah, you tried to it write did. something sort of it similar did. to that, yeah. and it doesn't. Always work as no. well as, as the original no, you could, sort of no, concept. That's right. you, you, you just you, you, you go with what, what you happened. you go with what you got, and and, yeah. and you can only go with yeah. you, you know you, what you have. And um, it's like a ballad, isn't it? It's kind of like yeah, a sad, it's, it's a sad ballad. A, sort of yeah, thing. Uh, the less uh, said about it, the better. I think. Mean. Oh, well, to call this little thing it's great that, that you're bringing up these songs actually Vincent that I wouldn't have mentioned that one to be honest with you Christopher was a sort of obscure Rima Rima song well I know because I've got it on the Acklam I've got a set set list okay. on the Acklam Hall yeah. tape otherwise I wouldn't have what remembered it what about international it. scale is that on there no Oh, shit. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I, like, I like that one. I like, I like that, that one, one, and I never Marco, did yeah. at the time particularly, but I just heard it the other day and just thought... That's oh, on that's the good. MySpace page or it something, is, yeah, isn't that's it? Yeah, I've got that on. Oh, who did you do that I one? I
I'll take Christopher off then. I didn't. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I don't do the Rima Rima MySpace. I put it on. Who I does that then? I think he's an Adam and the Ants fan called Stephen. I think. Oh, that it? guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's okay. nice actually. Yeah, he's all right. I mean, do, I haven't met him. Do you think I, I? I've met him. Okay. Do you get PRS every time someone pays um, your track of MySpace? It's <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> an interesting question. No, not yet, no. no, no I, I don't mean you personally. I mean, no. like, does one. Right. I don't think does so. One. I don't no. think you do, no. But theoretically, but MySpace Spotify is going, is not it? It's been bought by Facebook. And theoretically, Spotify is meant to pay, but I don't know about oh, anybody yeah. else. Do they pay? I, YouTube's supposed exactly. to pay. Yeah, yeah but it's nickels and dimes. Yeah, it's, not it's, really like, it's not, like, you know, it's not ten, having, yeah. tenth of a pay every play. Uh, yeah, other exactly people I've spoken to also get 0.1 of a penny for an iTunes download. So <laughs> all the stuff we signed in those days was way before, <laughs> before all this anyone stuff. dreamt of this thing. And yeah. I guess they rewrote the shares and so they could keep mm. their Rolls Royces. Mm. So what was, the, <laughs> yeah. what was the absolute duration of Rima Rima? Quite short lived ephemeral, that one, wasn't Actually, it? Actually, I thought year? it was. Depends I thought, when you count I think it. The start I thought was it was two years. From start to finish? Yeah. yeah. When do I start rehearsing? 1978. Yeah, the beginning yeah. of 1978 till the end of 1970. Well, in fact, I've looking in this diary last night, I've got written down when Marco rang and said, I'm leaving, which was November the 29th, 1979. Oh, <laughs> I'm leaving the band, he said. <laughs> I'm going off with Adam. No, I wasn't going off with Adam. Actually. No, I wasn't going no, off with anybody at that time. It that's hadn't. Right. But you yeah. played together with with Max and that's Andy and Paul Starr. That's right. You, t- you yeah, did some yeah. stuff yeah, with Max. Yeah, but that was that was before. We 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 had a we had a kind of um, you know a, a sort of a play band. Intro. But we only did two gigs, so we weren't. We, we, weren't, we weren't. It wasn't Billy's, supposed wasn't to be one of them. Gossips, yeah. It wasn't supposed to be a long lived. I think it was a reaction against. What was being done, you know, sort of the latter part of Rima Rima. Rima. It wasn't really. It was more that just that, that Paul and Jay kept, kept, kept saying yeah, that they kept tormenting the bloody life out of us, yeah. saying they wanted Jay well, Strongman and Paul Star Peanuts. Peanuts. Paul. What yeah, happened yeah, yeah. to Paul they just, uh, they just really, really wanted to be in a band and they just talked yeah. about it and we got so fed up with them talking about it that Mark and I just said, well, we're playing a band with you just, just to get you going. And, we and then Andy Warren find, joined us. We, we tried well. to find drummers and bass players and, and musicians so that we didn't have to do it. <laughs> 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 we just, we just couldn't fail. find I it. liked no. doing it then. I did, it was really nice to play well, with Well, that was Billy. the only reason we did it. I mean, it wasn't, you know, we weren't... We weren't, we weren't but I, was, it wasn't like a serious offshoot that we were going to <laughs> pursue. But actually, I did. I mean, I did end up staying with Jay and Paul and, and formed the L train. So for me, oh, okay. it became to become. What happened to Paul Stoll? Uh, I don't uh, know. Uh, it's, um, sometimes he's, he's sort of still around. Yeah. He's still We're around. going over to Watford and his mum's Marco. Do you remember that that um, factory yeah, paper yeah, factory? We used to, we used to go break into sort of strange places. Yeah, why did we break into a f- paper factory? <laughs> but anyway, uh, we used to climb over to some funny place with canals oh. and what was that? Yeah, I don't know. The only memory I have of Peanuts is of going back over his house. It's him raging at his mum for, <laughs> for, for um, washing his frying pan. <laughs> 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 Wasn't he a cook or something? Yeah, yeah, he was a cook. And he, uh, yeah, he was, he was, yeah, he was a cook. And, uh, he yeah, worked he, at Peppermint Lounge. Yeah, fry, yeah, your frying pan's important. Yeah. Why can't you... F- why can't you wash it? I don't know. <laughs> you have to. Pres- you just have to you wipe it with oil, methods. Mick. That's Ooh. what you do, and special then it just needs, retains it. Uh, One of the other things I want to ask you about was your relationship with the Banshees. Other than Marco being a kind of former mm. Banshee, there was definitely a relationship between Rima Rima and. I remember mm. Steve Severin coming to the first gig that we did and really loving <coughs> fond affections, mm. and um, being quite sort of. I I'm still in contact actually. with him, actually. Well, He's about the only nice person guy, from that time it? that I'm still in contact nice, with. Nice yeah. I suppose one of the, the my main reasons... Kenny reason Morris was around at that time. He and Kenny nice didn't well. have a drum kit. Did so so he played my drum kit. So I think yeah. that's why we supported them. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that what, that's, that's why anyone yeah. supported the Banshees, because they John, didn't have John any McCarthy, equipment <laughs> at all. Which is really annoying. But it was. I mean, you had a relationship with Susie and that. I mean, obviously from the 100 Club. Yeah. Yeah, and, Susie, uh, Susie and Steve, I, I knew, but then I kind of didn't know them. Like all three punk, I'd kind of no, no, all three punk, I did know them. Yeah. But um, But I mean, I, I, they just remained, didn't it? And I remember when, um, but I, I actually somehow got involved with um, John Mackay. John Mackay and oh, Kenny. Linda. Oh right, okay. Because like they, they. 
they'd snuck, uh, they'd left the tour or something. Yeah, yeah they'd, or, they'd run away from the tour. And, and we were going to do the tour with them, weren't we? That's, that's right. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. going that to was say. I read somewhere actually, yeah. that you were supposed to yeah. support them on the entire that's tour. That's right. We yeah. played, uh, Vincent. Yeah, we were. And But, but what happened was, is our manager, um, Linda Clark, was having a relationship yeah. with yeah. the guitarist. And Lovely. then all of a sudden they've sort of like they they sort of jumped ship, haven't they, and left the band. Dreams. She kind of all did she? Did she? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think she did. Yeah. Yeah. A safe house for them, for Kenny and John. But they they were starting to disagree. Um, yeah, they weren't happy because Marco's dad had bought a van for the models. <laughs> Nobody else could drive, so I used to drive it. And because of that, there were times when I would take people's equipment to their concerts and Susan the Banshees. I did few times maybe eight or ten so yeah. this is because and not only then, did they not have a drum kit they didn't have drums they didn't have drums <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have so anything so it, it was all um, kind of knitted in together sort of thing and Kenny and John were becoming distressed at the sort of uh, potential commercial path wasn't your driving this <laughs> uh, well that, that was pretty distressing yeah. <laughs> but so in order to calm down they used to um, get into the distress of of, uh, <laughs> just, yeah. Sort of. um, so um, yeah, she or, she kind of orchestrated a place where they could go and run to and be and sort of be um, out of the way, kind of thing. Well, so what they, do you mean out of the way? You mean to hide? Yeah, yeah, a safe house. <laughs> right. And um, so that was how you know that it was a big thing because they'd they'd put, they'd finance the tour themselves or something like that. Also, as we said, Rima Rima were going to be playing with them on the whole yeah. tour, which was Shame we'd only ever played so in London. Well. And we'd only really done these kind of special events, like playing at cinemas and things. And uh, I think we only ever played about, uh, I still haven't counted, but it's about eight or ten times. I thought it was quite a lot. I think it was more than that. Was it? It's, I don't know. Uh, I, I actually, I can... <laughs> you can get your diary out in a minute. And yeah. it was all in, 90, <laughs> it was from January the 1st, 1979, and the last one was in November 1979. Oh yeah, because that was, that's was the one that was at Toya's. Um, Which one was that, Mark? I was, I mean, King's College. There was a fire alert. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, remember I remember that. Everybody leaving the building apart okay. from me. Oh, I, I, was, I wanted to stay with my sin. <laughs> Would you so I was in this <laughs> gig. That could have been on the gravestone, the, couldn't it, really? All the stuff um, <laughs> Sticking with the art. set yeah, up on stage. <laughs> and it's King's College in London, which overlooks the Thames. It's a fantastic room and a great view and everything. And there was a fire alarm. Everybody, I was the only person in the room. It was a, this brilliant little surreal experience. So tell me, just switching back, are you surprised about the kind of accolade that's come to Rima Rima? I didn't know there was any. Yeah. Well, a MySpace site that none of you guys have set up, that's got to say something, hasn't right. it? Yeah, For a band that played nine times. Right, yeah. I think... Um, Big Black covers... Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard that, is that any good? Yeah, well, it's all right. You heard it, mate? I have. It's Steve Albini, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, yeah. Is it... Was it is Rollins in that? Was he in that? Henry Rollins? No, he wasn't in that one. He wasn't in that. He didn't. I don't think he played on that record. But it was a freebie, wasn't it? A flexi yeah, yeah. freebie. Yeah, I've been in. Yeah, no, then I met him. They repressed him. it, I, I heard. Somebody said they repressed it as a cover. But also Blixer, you know, Blixer, Blixer he was, he was a big fan. Yeah. I mean, there were, yeah, there's some people, yeah, yeah. but... Uh, sort of left wing sort of... There's always, issues. whatever you do, you're always going to sort of like leave something and people are going to, you know... Do you ever think that you'd work together to do something, not necessarily a recording, but how would you feel about recreating the sound of Rima Rima after all these years? Do you mean recreating the song? You mean do a gig? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've asked the wrong person, Vince. <laughs> well, I want to do a remix. This is the man who of, weeps of on people's tracks. laps if he's got, got the, to play uh, live. Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. So it's highly unlikely a good, yeah. Good idea, <laughs> Vincent. But having said that, Vincent, I, I wanted, I want, and will be doing a, a remix of it because there's a track on there that wasn't, what didn't, um, never got released, did it, Mark? No. So we couldn't get the, the, the timing was a bit. Well, if that. Left the timing at home, lad, didn't you? Left the timing <laughs> machine at home. We have a different opinion on <laughs> why that days. track wasn't released. Really? Mark agrees with me that it was because it was considered Charisma blasphemous by Charisma. Didn't I want to. Because but we, no, no, but they but said they, they wouldn't said. release it. Yeah, but was it, was it, was it wasn't, it wasn't was Charisma it, who released it? Or was it no, just no but Charisma, pa Charisma, Charisma paid, paid for the, the recording and then right. I got the tapes off them and then right. they said they would never release that track because it's blasphemous. That's right. That's why they didn't go with it. And out of time. Yeah, <laughs> and it was out of time. But I don't see it's completely out of time. How, how does that relate <laughs> to 4AD putting it out? out of time. 
How, how did what? How does that relate to 4 AD? I don't think it does, Mick. I think it was just the out of time thing that got yeah, we, it. That's, that's, it in the end. We didn't, we didn't like it. Because it wasn't it in time, what didn't it wasn't feel right? Time. No, it was out of time. I liked it. I still like it. I still like I still it, but like I just it. wish really it was like in time. It, and you could make it. You can make it. You can put it in time now. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's do go. that. Let's, let's do that. There you are. It's that joint decision. Let's let's. You're going to get your release entry. Tentative back. We're not playing Christopher on this. No, why on this tour? Why ask why? Oh, that's a good one, that one. Yeah. I like that one. <laughs>
was your favourite track then? Can we ask you questions now? Yeah. I think it was... You know, it's a shame we never made an album because there was some... I'd later recorded Murder Music with um, Renegade Soundwave, which is a really... It was a good track on, on, on a good album and sampled Marco's bit in between. You know that feedback sound in between yeah. the feedback song and Rima Rima? Mm. Sort of incorporated that into the... I can't remember the title. Tell me which... It starts off with a bass line, as they probably pretty yeah, much all do. Yeah. But boom, boom. Oh, boom, oh, the devil moves boom, within. Boom, oh, short boom, stories. Boom, boom. There yeah, you go. That, there you go. That's a good song. That what one. What one? Short stories. It was I ninety know, seconds was, long. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> it was really short, but it was really good. Yeah. <laughs> For that, Vincent. Well, no, thank you. Nice you to know, be in the same space with everybody as well. It it's kind of interesting. Totally. Though the band performed publicly less than a dozen times in total and recorded only a handful of songs, the four track EP did however get released posthumously on 4AD Records. The EP received some press attention at the time, but its real importance lies in the inspiration it provided to others, with subsequently covers of two of its songs being undertaken by the artist Big Black and Miss Mortal Coil. This helped Rima Rima find new audiences. And of the five musicians themselves, Free moved on to form a short-lived project called Mass, producing a single album for 4AD, before transferring their talents to two new ensembles the Wolfgang Press and Renegade Soundwave. Another of the band's members, perhaps surprisingly, became the songwriting partner of Adamant, enjoying global superstardom throughout the 1980s. Subsequently, graduated to become a respected producer. Today he runs his own group called The Wolfman. And of Max, she progressed into the ranks of Genesis Pete Origins, post Robin Gristle ensemble Psychic TV. Not least of all, playing on the band's 1985 hit Godstar, before later dedicating herself to a full-time career in theatre and dance. This program then, been a brief snapshot in time, a rehearsal of memory. Not only did it gather all five musicians in the same place for the first time in more than 30 years, but it allowed you, the listener, the opportunity to briefly celebrate a sound as poignant and fresh today as it was in 1979, the sound of Rima Rima.